Now let's get more on the government's promise to ban hate preachers from entering the UK. A new task force will be introduced to clamp down on hate in addition to targeting extremist organisations operating in the UK and abroad. I'm delighted to say I'm now joined by the Security Minister, Tom Tugendhat. Welcome to the show, Tom. Always a delight. Sounds like a fantastic and much Martin, needed and overdue initiative. I guess the first question is, how are these people ever allowed into the UK in the first place? Well, look, I've been working hard to make sure they never get in, and that's why I'm working together now with Foreign Office and uh, DLUC, Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities, to make sure that we know exactly who's trying to come here and why, and, and make sure that those who are trying to spread hate, trying to divide us, trying to make some people feel like they, they should turn against their own country, that they're not allowed in. And this is a really important part of our job. This is a really important thing that the government should be doing. And so I'm very proud that we're bringing together this team, this task force, to make sure that anybody who tries to spread hatred in our country will simply not get in. You know, let's not kid ourselves, Martin. You know, a visa is a privilege. It's not a right. You have no right to come here if you're a foreigner. You're only allowed here if what you are doing here is to the advantage of the British people more widely, to visit family, to visit friends, to work. We love that. That's great. But not to spread hate, not to divide us. And, Tom, just say um, that people slipped through the net or somehow got in or they got, in, got into the country under false premises. Oh, I don't know, they arrived on a dinghy and we have no idea who they are. And then they were located in the UK. How would they be forcibly removed? Because we saw with, with, <coughs> with, we saw with previous hate preachers before, it's impossible to remove them from the country. It took over a million pounds of taxpayers' money in the case of Abu Hamza, and it took years to get him out. So how could we get rid of the people we don't want when they're already here? So that was a different case uh, because he'd already got a different status. But anybody who's here on a visa, we can take it away. And look, this is something we've already been doing, Martin. Look at, since those protests started in October, look at what we've already done on some of those student visas. If you come here to study, fantastic, you're very welcome. Come and learn, come and study what you need to do take those skills home, develop a, a, a growing career for yourself. That's wonderful. Our universities are here to help. If you come here claiming you want to study, but you then start spreading hatred, you then decide that you want to divide communities, Jewish communities from Muslim communities in our country, I'm afraid that's not what your visa's for. Mm. Let's be clear. If that's what you want to do, go find somewhere else to do it. Mm. We've already taken visas away from some students who've been here to study and have decided that that's not what they actually thought, what they actually wanted to do. Instead, they wanted to join these protests and spread anti-Jewish hatred. Well, we're not having that. And we've taken their visas away. And, and let me be clear, you know, this is not something we do lightly. It's not something we want to do. What we want to do is we want to welcome people to study, to see family, to enjoy being in the United Kingdom. But if you don't want to live up to our rules, OK, well, then you're going to lose your visa. Your visa is a privilege, not a right. And many people watching this, Tom, will be in total agreement with you, but they might question the ability or the veracity of this to be enforced. It came out last week, 21,000 people who have no right to remain in the UK, <coughs> whose, whose asylum has been refused for whatever reasons, and they should be removed, that they simply vanished. They vanished into the country. What would stop these people simply vanishing too? So those, those figures aren't quite correct. I'm not going to go through the bureaucracy of it, but they're, they're not quite correct. There are a few who've vanished. And by the way, even if it's just one, that's not good enough. And I completely accept that. So let's not pretend that the numbers are what we're arguing about. We're arguing about the principle. If you come here for a purpose and you don't live up to the agreement on which you came, then you shouldn't be here. And that's why we've already expelled people from the country. In the last couple of years, we've expelled 26,000. And, you know, just in the recent months, we've expelled one or two. And the reason I'm picking on those one or two is because they're one or two who came as students, came to study, came to develop themselves, or well, that's what they said, and then joined protests to spread hatred. Now, there are many reasons why people could lose their visas. But let me be absolutely clear on your channel speaking to the British people. If somebody comes to study and then decides that they're going to use the opportunity to spread hatred, they will lose their visas and they will be expelled from the country. 
OK, somebody who's left the Conservative Party. Can I get your reaction on yesterday's shock defection by Natalie Elphick to the Labour Party? It was so shocked, nobody seemed to know what was going on at PMQs. Do you have a message for Miss Elphick? Well, look, I, I, I just wonder what she could possibly have been offered. I mean, it, it's so out of keeping, so out of character. But you know who it's not out of character for? It's not out of character for Keir Starmer. This is a guy who, frankly, stands for nothing at all. I mean, you know, if you've got a party in which you're entirely comfortable sitting next to Zara Sultana on one side and Natalie Elphick on the other, I mean, you're such a broad church, you might as well be offering bar mitzvahs. <laughs> Good line. Good line, Tom. But on a serious point, on a serious point, she was handing out leaflets just the day before, criticising Sir Softy, as she called him, with a picture of Sir Keir Starmer next to an open door. And yet, the very next day, tap dancing over into the red corner. Does this send out a message that nobody is safe? We've seen, um, we've seen today the 65th person to, to um, not stand at the next election, Nadim Zahawi. Are you thinking about throwing the hat in? <laughs> I'm, do you know what I'm thinking about doing? I'm thinking about fighting and winning for the people of Tunbridge and Morling and making sure that we have a good Conservative government come, going forward. And my main pri pri priority right now is to keep the British people safe in the job I'm doing, because I think this is a fantastically important job and something that I will not stop doing until I'm asked to do, to stop by the Prime Minister. So, you know, this is a fantastically important role and I'm, I'm very proud to be doing it. But I tell you what it says about Natalie, and I'm really sorry, but it shows you that there's more opportunism than conviction in some people. Uh, and, and that's a, a, a very sad state of affairs. It tells you a lot about them. It tells you nothing about the party. And in uh, Keir's case, it tells you a hell of a lot about him. It stands for nothing. OK, thanks for joining us on the show. Security Minister Tom Tugendhat, and that's a great line about the bar mitzvah. I might nick that. Thank you very much for joining us on the show. Always a pleasure to have you.